All right, what's up, guys? It's Aaron from uh, Teens Really Matter, and this is my friend Jeff. Hello. And uh, we wanted to, I wanted to ask him about his story. I've, uh, this is an amazing story, and God just really, he, he's a miracle right here. So I just wanted to um, talk about his story. Yeah, so. Yes. so when I was uh, a week from before my 14th birthday, I got a, a Schwinn 13 speed from my grandfather, and I asked my mother to go across town. Um, I lived at the time on... If you guys are familiar with Arizona at all, I lived around 75th Avenue in Camelback, and I drove up to 45th Avenue in Camelback. And on the way home, I was hit by a car um, going approximately 75 miles an hour. Um, it happened approximately at 63rd Avenue in Ocotillo. I was on a 10-speed, and um, he was coming from my left-hand side. We both ran the stop sign to the four-way intersection. It was kind of a curved road, so I couldn't see him coming. Um, all I heard was the vehicle. Um, Look to my left, and saw it and let go of my bike is all I remember consciously thinking about. Um, I woke up on the, I didn't, I don't think I lost consciousness, but I woke up on the concrete and felt, felt my body was like half there, half not there. So I checked to make sure my legs were there because I couldn't feel anything from the waist below. And, uh, they were there. So I decided to get off the street. Um, so I got up and walked to the, to the sidewalk. And as I was walking there, I noticed the, how much blood there was coming out of me. The main injury was on my head. Uh, from the windshield and uh, so I was pretty beat up I was in shock and uh, when I sat down on the concrete and looked at the street I realized that I'd be dead in a few seconds and then this overwhelming peace and a voice came with that overwhelming peace that says you're not going to die just lay back and I as I lay back I don't even remember touching the the back of the sidewalk or the grass I don't know how far on the sidewalk I was but um, after that I experienced a blurring white everything it was it was almost like I was just transported immediately out of the the, away from the side of the road where I was there was no neighborhood around and I was just in a white fog Um, I believe that was after learning later on I believe that was the glory I guess you could say it some people describe it as a cloud Um, and I felt the sensation of, of drifting or floating without walking that something next to me was or someone next to me was incredibly big and I, I couldn't even couldn't even say that it was next to me but it was there a, 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 a presence that was all around I guess you could say and then I found myself in what I learned later on to be what I think is I don't know this for sure because it was a pretty mind-boggling experience um, what I believe to be was the throne room of God because later on in a book called Crazy Love I was shown that that there are 24 elders that surround that throne room all the time of God And I thought they looked like angels. I thought at first they were angels for the longest time after the accident I did. But later on I found out I think that they were more likely um, the elders that surround God's throne. And um, I saw in the middle, I saw what appeared to be 13 or 14 of them standing kind of in a circle. I could only see what was on one side. I couldn't see the other side. But um, they looked uh, very tall, very uh, humanoid, but dark-orbed eyes, um, crowns that seemed to be a part of their their head they seemed very tall you know 10 12 feet tall to me um i was dumbfounded i wasn't saying anything or thinking anything other than (laughs) what do you think about you know um so when i looked at them i got the overwhelming feeling of compassion bliss understanding um adoration and love beyond anything i'd ever felt in my life before um nothing had ever come close and nothing has come close since um and when i say close i mean that they're not even in the same universe they're just to be out of the body and with god is completely different than than here it's it's easily the human experience is easily forgotten when you're there um we had a small conversation i don't think i remember the whole thing it was more like him telling me what was going to happen but when i looked at these uh, what I thought were angels at the time that turned, I think they were elders later on in life. I learned, um, I felt that compassion, that love, that, that honor. And I immediately didn't want to go. I immediately felt as though I forgot about my human life, uh, here. I forgot about the pain. I forgot about the fact that I was, I knew that I was just hit, but I completely forgot about it. All I was focused on is what was happening at the time. And, uh, through this feeling of love, adoration and all, and, I don't know whether I dropped to my knees or whether or not I was just felt like I was on my knees or whether I couldn't move, but I was dumbfounded completely until he said that I had to go back. Um, And then I I said, no, no, no. Um, I don't know how many of you have ever told God no, but it tends to not work out. 
because I'm here. Um, so when he said, I have to go back, uh, I had questions for him. I said, I didn't want to go back. Um, I wanted to stay here with him. There was nothing more profound than that. I wanted to stay. And, uh, he had said something to me, which made me, uh, which made me think maybe, maybe if somebody needed me back there or something like that, he, he told me that she needed you. And I think that was speaking of either his church or perhaps someone in my future. I don't know. I, I still don't quite know. I still don't quite know who that was that he was speaking of. Um, but I, I was not comfortable about going back. And when I woke up in the hospital, I don't remember waking up in the hospital. Um, a nurse came to me after I was being wheeled out and she said, um, I was in and out of consciousness. She asked me, what, why did, what did you mean when you said that? And I was kind of drifting in and out and I didn't really know what she was talking about. And it appears that when I had come out of consciousness, I put my hands around her neck and without me opening my eyes, I told her, send me back. I want to go back. Please send me back. I can't stay here. Go back. Um, that kind of thing. So that was my experience, um, in what the near death experience that I, so I don't know. Do you have any questions about it? Um, yeah, that's powerful, man. That's crazy. So, um, what, what would you, uh, when you were up there, like, um, what did it feel? Could you go into more of what, how it felt like when you were up there? Just, yeah. If you can imagine, um, I don't know how to, it's hard to relate the physical to what happened up there. You know what I mean? Um, or how I felt up there, but if you can imagine, Try to try to take away your analytical mind and just imagine that you can take off a, your suit of humanness and hang it on a wall and be completely done with it. That's, I would say, what the fullest ex expression of what I felt was. Um, I wasn't afraid of anything. Um, there was no question that didn't come without an answer. As though if I, if you know how you get a question in your mind, like, oh, how does this work? Or just, just really anything. There was a, a kind of a, if the question came into my mind, the answer was with it. It was just a, a it's almost like if, if, if I already knew everything. And I think the scripture says that if, if when you meet God, you'll know him, you know yourself as he knows you. Um, so that was, I didn't really understand what that meant in the experience, but it was, uh, it was phenomenal because I forgot about all things here. I didn't want to leave. Um, I was willing to give up all future experiences here. I was willing to give up, uh, any of the love I had back home, um, because I didn't really feel like I was giving it up. I felt like I was coming home um, more than anything. I felt like this was the place for me more than anything. And um, when I told him no, that I didn't want to go back, I wanted to stay. It was a gentle, just a gentle shifting. Um, I mean, what do you do when God speaks to you? Um, you really can't do anything but get hit by his, his power and his words. Um, so it was an experience that allowed me to never question his existence. Um, and I didn't really question it before I was 14 because a lot of kids are focused on playing and, and I could see God in nature and the world, I think. Um, but that experience was uh, above anything that I've ever experienced uh, on this planet, ever. So. Wow. That's amazing, man. <laughs> That's, oh, it, wow. took, it took me a very long time to get used to being here. I was actually upset with God for quite a many years after I became an adult because here I was working a job, paying taxes, you know, <laughs> doing everything that we got to do to be here. And uh, I had these fading thoughts of eternal bliss and complete content, being content, you know, needing nothing. And that's, uh, it's about, the, it's, it's hard to put into words, you know, it really is. It's, uh, that's why they call him God, you know. Wow. That's amazing. That's so I, I really hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks for sharing, Jeff. No, you're welcome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. God bless. Have a great day and thanks for watching.